Okay, the current trend of retro teching a vintage vehicle is to put a late model power plant in that is economical, reliable, and more importantly, powerful. We use factory V8 engine mount pads. That allows the fitment of the engine mounts. We've notched the shock towers for additional clearance to be able to use the factory turbo. Uh, we have a radiator mount so that you can use the factory radiator. We have a much larger intercooler on this particular application. There's a number of other key modifications. There's a little notch that has to be put into the engine bay to be able to clear the big ZF gearbox. Uh, you'll notice that there's no booster and master cylinder here. That's optional and we've mounted our underdash unit. And of course the reservoir for the underdash unit is hidden away as well. We've also modified the factory cross member on this particular model uh, to allow access for the bottom radiator hose to be able to use a factory radiator. Part of the engine conversion from RRS is a converted original harness. These are the uh, computer plugs to go into the factory computer. This goes to our replacement relay pack. And then there's a series of other connectors, one that goes to the drive-by wire pedal, another one that goes to the fuel pump, a speed sensor that goes on one of our rear axles, uh, of course the Tiptronic gear shift to make that operate, and a number of other accessories. So that way you've got a plug and play system. We have a tail shaft adapter, so that you can use a conventional slip joint uh, tail shaft on the ZF gearbox. We also have a rear gearbox mount adapter that you can use an original early Ford rear transmission mount. Okay, we're on the final stages of uh, completing this engine conversion. And the merits of this is that you can source a complete power plant with the auto, the computer, uh, radiator, all of the power steer pump and air conditioning for a very cheap price second hand from the wreckers and from there you can upgrade to major power without even opening this engine. When you're modifying a, a FG a Turbo 6 to go into an early Falcon or Mustang you require a front sump pickup. Uh, there's a number of methods that you can use to achieve this. Uh, the first one is to get a BA sump. Um, the second one is to use a Ford Territory sump. Uh, Ideally you want to get a, a turbo sump because it's got the oil return uh, already in it but there's a casting in the early BAs that you can drill and tap into. Now one of the things that we got caught out with <coughs> is that the later FG has no provision for the dipstick in the block for a front sump. All of the earlier blocks do. So we had to make an adapter to put the dipstick tube into the BA sump. However, that's uh, relatively straightforward. Also, there's a number of other fittings. Uh, our power steering adapter to be able to hook up to the RRS rack. We also have our engine mounts, so they bolt in on original frame mounts. Uh, added to that, there's adapters for uh, water temperature, so you can use the factory gauges and also the oil pressure. So here we have our uh, XD to XF front cross member uh, for our three link, which also incorporates the rear gearbox mount for the ZF uh, gearbox or a T56. It has the three link mounting bracket for the over center link. And more importantly, it has a chassis reinforcement aspect because you shouldn't just put a flat plate on the floor. So the way that the chassis is reinforced, it incorporates the original pressing on the floor, which is kind of like a U-shape, where the seat box mounts. As soon as you put a cross member like this, then that floor pressing becomes a cross member. So it follows this contour and raises up. Added to that, this is a XR to XY front cross member. This attaches to the outer seat mounting bolt holes. Where there's a small subframe that comes from the outer sill panel down to the floor panel. This provides reinforcement normally just for the seat mounts. But when you tie all of this in together, it then becomes an integral cross member right from rail to rail that this is a stiffer chassis once these components are installed.
But the whole idea is to get a modern driving car in a vintage vehicle. One that is reliable, easy to maintain and of course huge power.